permanent magnet or pulse motor generators or rotating magnetic generators. And finally, devices that use uh, what is sometimes called uh, counter-gravity, electrogravitic uh, devices that use those phenomena of anti-gravity to uh, produce generators in addition to the anti-gravity thing. So those are four areas uh, that we see are very highly likely because people have already been successful in these areas to a certain extent. Well, anyway, people have been very successful. They just haven't been able to get it out to, to, the, to the public. And uh, one of the problems is that uh, people have to uh, understand that if a tree falls in the woods and, and the 7 billion people on Earth don't hear about it, then it, 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 and effectively did it really exist? Well, yeah, it did but in sort of a very small circle of people, sort of a, a fringe element. Mm -hmm. Our purpose in this would be to mainstream this and get this in front of, uh, you know, everyone from the president to uh, senior people in, in uh, science to uh, the people in the entertainment industry like Oprah. Uh, and, and the reason for it is that we know that everyone wants to see this solution. I mean, it's not as if uh, <laughs> everyone with power and money in the world are wanting to keep this stuff secret. It's a relatively small number of people mm -hmm. who benefit from the secrecy, the illegal secrecy, I should point out. Um, and therefore, we have a lot of allies, but they want to see something operational. Now, it's a bit of a chicken-egg thing because a lot of people, before they get involved, want to see something already built. But in order to get something built, you need the funding to be able to put these people who worked previously on these systems, some of them in classified projects, together and build them. So it is a chicken-egg problem, uh, unless some <laughs> inventor that's listening out there walks through the door with a fully operational system uh, who is uh, sane and reasonable enough to cooperate with the strategic plan to get it out to the public, which is a very, very rigorous process because um, we have a team of wonderful volunteers uh, up to this date, I have to point out that 100% of the funds that people have contributed to the OrionProject.org have gone to actually help study this issue and uh, to to the work. No one has received a salary. In other words, Dr. Loader and Dr. Uh, Bravo and myself, uh, uh, we have other engineers who are volunteers. None of them are paid anything for their time, nothing, zero. But they're out of pocket mm -hmm. expenses, obviously. But if you, you, what we what we want to be able to do and, uh, is to say that these folks are standing ready. They're really on call 24/7. If there is some system that exists already that needs to be properly evaluated, tested, and then reproduced, because you, know, you if you can't reproduce it, you can't say it's a science. If somebody has something operational and uh, another scientific team can't reproduce that effect, it isn't science, my friends. It's somebody is pulling wool over your eyes. Some so, <laughs> Yeah, or whatever, because real science is reproducible, um, and that's the sine qua non of science. Um, so we have people to do that, uh, and we're actively searching all the time. In fact, before this phone call, uh, this interview started, uh, Dr. Loder and I were having a phone call conversation about some of the things that are kind of out there percolating that, that may be existing systems that are uh, in the pipeline. But I think that the, the most secure way to do this is to put very well-qualified, experienced people under one roof where they can do this with the right equipment. And I have kept emphasize this is a very expensive proposition because the equipment has to be able to handle tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of volts of electricity, but at very low amperages. Because, you know, you're dealing with, when you get into these sort of systems, if you look at what uh, Stan Meyer, for example, was doing turning water into a fuel, using very little electricity, so it was, quote, over unity, meaning that it created, it released more energy than you had to put into it from the electricity. That's because of the unique voltages and pulsed pattern of, of resonant frequencies of the electrodes that he was using. That's why that system worked. And 
uh, it, it, the, the equipment and the circuitry and even the devices you need to be able to measure your progress are all highly specialized and, and fr frankly, would have to, in some cases, be custom made because we deal in a low voltage world. I mean, if you look at your electrical appliances, it says 110 volts on it, which is your household outlet. So high voltage in your house would be 220 for your uh, 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 washing, uh, your dryer for your clothes. But that's very low voltage, but it's a lot of amperage, a lot of uh, current. But what we're talking about is very high voltage systems and specific resonant frequencies that are extremely low amperages. And so you're using very little power, but the voltages are high. And the, it, so you're using very little power, but it's tapping into... And this is this is the, the the overarching theory I want everyone to visualize. Whether you're doing it in water or an electromagnetic generator or, or permanent magnets, what these things are really doing is that they're they're tr they're tapping into this field of energy that's in the fabric of space time. And some have called this zero point energy. Some have called it the quantum vacuum. Some have called it I don't care what you call it but there's a huge potential amount of energy that's in the space all around us. This has been proven since the 1800s. Now, tapping into it requires very specialized engineering and physics, and that's what we're talking about doing at this laboratory. And then you can convert a car to run on water. You can make something fly and lift. You can have a, a, what looks like a generator that runs your house, but it's off the grid, and it's pulling energy uh, out of the space around it. That's where we want to go with this. But there's a lot of, of R&D, and, you know, the, the budget we have is relatively small. And, in fact, some people said, oh, well, it's too small. I said, well, we are not starting from scratch. We have uh, one of the other exciting things to announce is that we have acquired, and, and Ted has gone through this, a whole series of files that are on a disk that are thousands of pages, thousands of files of documents. Uh, from an intelligence source um, that was working with someone that both Ted and I have visited this man's lab. And this particular man, who we, who we don't want to name, was being recruited by the intelligence com community, and, and, and his handler said, look, you know, as a show, show of good faith, I'll let you copy all these files I have on all these secret devices. And so he did, and now we have them. I mean, that's a, it's a very long story made short, but that's what it is and we have all this on a, on a, on a CD now mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good summary of things because as I think it's very important to note we have not only a lot of background information but we also have a lot of people who, who as Dr. Greer has said have worked in these areas for years either within the Defense Department or other uh, industries and they want to work on this stuff uh, now with us and uh, bring some of this out. So, so we're, we, aren't, we aren't starting from the bottom rung of the ladder. We're partway up the ladder already. And uh, furthermore, we, we know that uh, some of these things have been developed and made functional in the past. And knowing something is possible uh, in some cases is half the battle toward getting there, uh, knowing that it can be done. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's one of these things that's, uh, if you understand the principles and you have people experienced in that art, which is who we're talking about, the, the people who have agreed and want to work with us on this, then you're not talking about starting from scratch because there's a hundred years of, of work that's already been done. It's, it's a much shorter pathway. And that is what, exactly what needs to happen at the same time that you're putting the strategic team together, which we've done, to get this out to the world because, uh, you know, this year I've been invited to some events uh, that, are, that are at the, the, the Sundance Film Festival. Well, if I had an operational device, I'd be able to say, look, you know, here's, you go. <laughs> here it is. And, you know, I just walk right up to Oprah or whoever. So I think that what we want to be able to do is, is get to the point where we can put this in the network that we've built and say, look, this is not only theoretical, it is operational. So either we have to find someone who has one that hasn't already been snarfed up by the national security state abuse of power, or we have to do it ourselves, and then when the national security state comes a calling, they know not to come to calling on me because I've already gone through this. I mean, I was approached, I mean, to give people a short hit course in the history of the last 20 years, in 1992, 
the head of Army Intelligence offered me $2 billion to shut up, and I wouldn't take it. And then he went to my wife and all kinds of flattery and chicanery, trying to convince her that I should fold what I was doing and merge with some shadowy operation that he was working on. And, and I finally said, I'm not going to do it. And this is 18, 19 years ago now. And basically, within 30 days of that, my name was Mud, and there's been nonstop defamation of character and attacks on me all over the Internet. But the point is, that is the kind of things they will try. And the average person is not going to say no to a $2 billion buyout offer. In fact, it takes a lot less than that. Okay, yeah, we found that it t- for some people it takes a few hundred thousand. Depends on the person. He he knew that, but this, but I said no, I'm not interested. So, you know, in other words, it's like when you go to a, a, an art show and it says not for sale on it. I'm not for sale. The knowledge that needs to come out to save the world from this crazy trajectory we're on isn't for sale to some devil who happens to have a control of the printing presses or is running drug money, or whatever it is the hell they're doing. My position is, I'm not for sale, and the national security state can go bite its own ass. and not going to bite mine, because my view of it is that I recognize that these people don't have any legal authority. And I'm not interested in money. I'm not interested in their power. None of that impresses me. I'm totally unimpressed by power and money. And people who are very rich who come clucking up to me who think that I'm going to be genuflecting and sit kissing their feet, they've got the biggest shock of their life coming. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and same thing with these powerful, uh, some of these intelligence and military people who thought that I'd be wowed by it. I, nothing, that doesn't impress me. Moral courage impresses me. Going the distance impresses me. Integrity impresses me. <laughs> These values impress me a great deal. I don't care if you're, you know, the, you know, picking up someone's trash or you're the yard man or whatever. You know, people who do wonderful things for other people that impresses me. Having billions of dollars not impressive. Having a lot of power that you've acquired through some kind of trick and chicanery, and ruthlessness doesn't impress me. Uh, but doing something wonderful for your fellow human beings. That's impressive. That's wonderful. So, you know, when this the, the head of Army Intelligence came up, I mean, I was just completely unimpressed, to say the least, um, a bit appalled that, at the figure that he was throwing around. I had no doubt he had access to it. And by the way, $2 billion in 1992 would be like, whatever, $5 billion today. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, it was a lot of money, and I, I wasn't interested. But the problem is, and this is, this is the problem, is that most politicians, businessmen, and I hate to say it, inventors, who are approached by these kind of devils are going to sell out. And I think that we have to, the team we have are the people who aren't the sellouts. I don't know how else to say it. Because we're doing this because we know it's time for the world to move on to a new path where we can become a sustainable, peaceful civilization where in a generation with these technologies, poverty would vanish from the earth. You know, people who are concerned about all the starvation in Africa and India and all the things going on, you are not going to fix it with throwing a few more billion dollars at it. You have to fundamentally change the way we're living on Earth so that people have the ability to irrigate, grow crops, have refrigeration, electrification, uh, clean water uh, with free energy. And then that's the big, huge game changer. But you know what? In the circles, in the intelligence communities, this kind of technology, they have a name for it, disruptive technologies. Mm-hmm. They call, instead of, I look at them as, as, as life-saving, earth-saving, transformative technologies. They call them disruptive. disruptive. You know, and it just shows you where their mindset is. They don't want to rock the boat. But you know what? The, 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 the era of the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers, they didn't want to rock the boat either with the Tesla stuff, and here we are 100 years later with the world and the state it's in, and they don't want to rock the boat now. At a certain point, you're just going to have to rock it, honey, and de- and deal with it. You know, it's like you're going to have to d- just deal with it because otherwise we're headed towards a denouement that isn't going to be pretty. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to just uh, accept the fact that this is where we are, and it's time for a group of people to have the courage and the vision to make this change and and not be uh, intimidated by uh, the power of the illegal state or the allure of a lot of money. 
Right. Uh, I'd like to hop in here for a moment in terms of the Orion Project again uh, to just add a couple of uh, uh, points that uh, people should be aware of. Uh, as a result of 